All right. So let's get on with our select core being. Any, okay. So we have um, no one's here for uh, public comment. Nice. Unless the uh, nope, no one's here. So the consent agenda. We have three items on the consent agenda. Agenda minutes from September 9th. Warrants 14 14s23 and a one day liquor license request for the top of the campus. So moved. Second. Yeah, all right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I'm going to jump around to the town a little bit. So the sealer of weights and measures contract. Okay. So we've been working with the city of Northampton to provide uh, sealer of weights and measures uh, services to the town of Hadley. Uh, if you remember, we tried to enter into an agreement with uh, Northampton about a year and a half ago. We got stuck on indemnification language that the town found to be problematic. Um, in the meantime, the state uh, took over the function of sealers and weights and measures. Uh, Sibeli was uh, doing that work. Uh, Mr. Sibeli has taken the early retirement, so right now we're not uh, performing that function at all. So. We either need to um, sign up with the city of Northampton uh, or we need to contract through the state to do this. If we sign up with Northampton, we have a revolving fund and a wage, uh, a rate schedule that uh, will be self supporting. Um, we did work, uh, we did revisit this issue with the city of Northampton. We asked them to address the indemnification language so that the voters of the town of Hadley wouldn't be entirely at risk for any issues that may uh, uh, arise with uh, provision of that services. They were flexible to provide some changes, um, but not quite as many as we were asking for. And so I think we're at a point where we need direction from the board as do we agree to the terms, which I think are as good as we're going to get from the city of Northampton. Uh, or we go in some other direction. Can we be far more specific with where this is and what the issues are? Okay, the original language of the uh, contract with the city of Northampton uh, meant that the town of Hadley indemnified uh, Northampton for all risks associated with sealer weights and measures. Regarding Hadley's? Uh, well, no, it was all risk. It was just blanket language that we could not accept. Uh, the language has been modified. Uh, we worked with the city of Northampton, and so they've clarified that the risk is to the town of Hadley, while the sealer of weights and measures is performing functions within the town of Hadley. Our attorney has looked at that language, has asked for additional changes. We presented those suggested changes to Northampton. They said that they were not going to entertain any further discussions about this uh, issue uh, and they pointed to surrounding communities that have signed agreements uh, where the indemnification is entirely on those other communities so they felt that they've been flexible uh, and I have to agree that they have moved from their initial position. Why would that not be our responsibility? Um, it could be. Um, uh, the, the issue that I think we're most concerned about is that the town of Hadley could be as, acting responsibly and the sealer would be acting irresponsibly and we would be on the, on the hook for that liability, yeah. uh, which is not the way these things are normally put together. Is that any different than a regular employee would be of the town of Hadley? Yes. Yeah, there's gross negligence and malintent and, I mean, there's none of that language in here. Right. So. The other towns that signed off on it, they have council? Yes. Same council we have. Could our council talk to their council and perhaps get clarification sure. as to why they were willing to sign off and, mm -hmm. and then try to get this resolved, resolved okay. quickly? Right. Any objection to that? None. I am not. There's, there's, there's no, nobody interested in this position in the town. Never, we, we haven't advertised it or anything. We went through an advertising process some time ago and we didn't get any uh, interest at that time. That was a couple of years back. So Mr. Fry is still the weight to measure in Northampton, though, is that correct? Yes.
So I, I would say we just yeah, get that clarification of why why Amherst would sign and our council says not to sign. All right. Uh, Commonwealth Compact Compact Projects. So oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Should put it on the consent agenda. Oh, we um, we I sent around uh, yesterday a uh, uh, an application to the Commonwealth Compact, which talked about one best management practice in the area of uh, of a uh, of, uh, putting together a financial management team, which would be uh, a lot more robust than we have currently in place. I reviewed that with uh, the treasurer, and she is on board with it. I also suggested to the school committee, uh, to the school superintendent, that we also explore a safe routes to school uh, program uh, as a uh, uh, area where we could get uh, technical assistance. And this afternoon, she agreed to that. So uh, I'm asking for technical assistance from the Commonwealth for a review of our financial management structure by which the town of Hadley will work towards a strong and appropriately structured financial management team which will be critical to assure the long-term health, financial health, uh, and also the Safe Routes to School program where the town of Hadley will work toward a comprehensive Safe Routes to School program which will improve safety and accessibility to schools. Uh, there's no cost to the town except that we have to do this in a two-year time period, which should, should be very doable. We'll be receiving technical assistance from the state, uh, and we will also boost our scoring for future um, grants that we may be applying, even if they're not uh, compact grants. I'll make a motion to accept David's recommendations and move forward with the contract. Second. Any more discussion? Well, based on our SWOT analysis, I think that this would be an important move in that direction. Is there an IT, um, is there a fallback? Is there any IT information available in this as well? Uh, should these two uh, applications not be available? Yes, there is. Okay. I, I would recommend that that be our third mm -hmm. avenue of succession. Okay. I, I, did, I didn't include that since we're going through a comprehensive mm -hmm. IT review. And all this information be available for the finance committee and our board and schools as you said yeah okay. motion okay. second on the floor chair any more discussion all those in favor aye. Aye. aye all right so water abatement we have five abatements it's actually six no it's still in there just the number was there's off. six okay they are all each of the same methodology. Yes. Right. The, this is the freeze list adjustment. There's a section of town, let's say on Tremor Road, where the majorities are, that the water main is only like two feet deep. And in the wintertime, there's a very, very good possibility of it freezing the service. So what we have been doing in the past is telling the people to read their meters to leave their water running, let's say. Don't leave it running in the house because you fill up your septic tank. Let it run slowly outside. Since then, we install these water-saving devices on their outside faucet, so it's not running wide open. It's not really wasting a lot of water, but there's just a steady, skinny, little pencil-like stream of water, less than a pencil of water that's going through these. So this is just the freeze, freeze list adjustments, let's say. I believe how, how did we how did we miss this? How did this happen? We do it every year, don't we? Yes, we do. I don't have that answer, but uh, it's something it was, probably that was. And they were done downstairs. Right. So this is this is just an adjustment that we would normally make anyways, but we didn't catch it this year. I make I make a motion that we allow for the abatement on the six on all six of the applications we have before us this evening. Second, somebody. Second, and then I have a question. All right, discussion. Um, the second one doesn't is a different area. The second one is the town of Hadley sewer pump station. We build ourselves seventeen thousand dollars, and we shouldn't have. You 
see that one, Michael? No, I don't have that one. Right. That's oh, the I second. Two thirty Middle Street pump station number yep. four. Yeah. That's the West Street common one. Yeah. It says that was a reading and billing software error. These have paid seventeen hundred fifty-two dollars and eighty-five cents. So it just wasn't picked up when they reviewed the bills before they went out? Yeah, water usage was 8508 to the feet. Is that all of them on Toronto Road? That's the list that we have, John. And actually, I think there's one on Bay Road, too. Yeah, I think you missed one. That's oh, one Bay, on Bay Road, 177 Bay. Yeah, that's the one there. Chimera. That's Chimera. That I've got from Chimera. From Sue. There's just one, one bay, the rest of Chimera. Yeah, 177 Bay Road. Any other discussion? The uh, Coolest was froze up this year. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not on her? Right. Okay. That was built a different way through the fire hydrant. All right. That was insulated, so it wouldn't freeze. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Upstate. All right, Jack Gonzalez and Sons, pay rec number three. This is the last pay rec for Laura and Elaine. Mr. Nixon? Yes, the previous payment, number three, the retainage was held of $9,745.34. And as part of payment number three, we released the retainage down to the value of 3000 pending the receipt, of course, of the as bills, which we don't have yet. So this is a difference of $6,745.34. So if you add the retainage released to the value of the work completed by Gonzalez between May 1st and July 30th, 2015, $3,000. $13.60, that gives you the amount of the total payment of $9,758.94. This has been reviewed, of course, by the Hounds engineering firm, Ty and Bond, uh, Charlie Tripp. Okay. Motion? Motion to pay. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Have you been asking for the, the as built? Yes, we have, and I spoke with Charlie today, and he said they are working on it, but they're not completed yet. Okay. Great. We have a dispatcher who is resigning. Yeah. One of our dispatchers has uh, been with us for a while, Carrie Flaherty, um, just doesn't have any time for us anymore. And uh, since we're now going through a hiring process to try to fill some of the slots that we need to fill, um, we were going through our list to try to see if we could get, you know, the people that are on the list to help out more or what their story was. And she was one of the people that just doesn't have the time for us and she didn't feel it was right to, to stay on. So she's uh, sent her, gave me a letter of resignation and I emailed that to David. I don't know if you have that in your packet, nope. um, but I would just request that that be accepted by the board. A motion to accept. Second. All right. Any other discussion? Are there any other? Uh, openings that could be generated by such a motion by it's not necessarily a matter of openings it's just a matter of us trying to determine whether or not we're going to be filling with what i call per diem people or uh people that we actually give uh, a slot to for our weekend shifts uh, jeff christick was actually one of the other people who did submit a resignation because he's just doesn't have the time for us anymore either um but with uh, one of our full-time dispatchers having a, a medical issue and being out for a while, he decided to pull it back and hang on for a little bit longer to help us out so we didn't get killed in the overtime. So um, he will probably be going eventually, but I think he's going to help us through this rough patch first. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Please, uh, do you mind sending a note saying thank you for all your years of service? Will do. Okay, Gooseberry Lane. This is informational um, mainly. Uh, it was approached by a, a developer who would like us to accept Gooseberry Lane as a public way. Uh, I uh, contacted the planning board to find out the status of the road, uh, and I was told that, uh, that there is a description of the road that, that needs to be clarified, so there's some homework that needs to be done by the developer. 
Um, I informed the developer that uh, we would put it on this uh, agenda here, but there is virtually no way for us to get it onto the warrant for the special town meeting, so this is really going to the annual town meeting. It uh, hasn't been reviewed by uh, police, fire, or DPW at this point, so that would be the next step. Uh, we would have to go through the same legal process as we're currently finding ourselves going through with Laurel Drive and Holly Road. Okay. Any more? Any discussion about it? All right. Acknowledge the acceptance of the letter. So, okay. Yeah, so it says here only a portion of the premises. 2002 were uh, recorded at the deeds office, so it wasn't complete. That is an old uh, article that I uh, that I just used for illustration purposes. This this needs to be updated. Okay. So. Okay, so we have a request to use the back of the senior center for parking on November 15th. It's not actually accurate, is it? It's more of the Legion parking lot. It's it was. Not it was brought to me verbally that the upper lot of the Legion, which is a town property, uh, would be, um, I haven't reviewed this letter closely, so we should make sure that we're clear as to which, uh, which property we're talking about. So it's one day. So yeah, let's make it clear and then we'll take it up next time. Right. Right. Okay. It's not until November anyway. Yeah. So. And just for those who are wondering what it is, it's for the New York City bus trip, which is organized supposedly every year. Uh, it's usually done via UMass. Uh, there, there's a timeline on this, isn't there? I mean, there's a time frame. Is this not time sensitive? They're trying to put together some sales and some tickets. If if it's the the Leech lot, I have, I, I don't have much of a problem with it. Yeah. If it's the lot at the senior center, I I don't know if I want to start farming that lot out when it's so used as it is. So as long as, uh, I'm willing tonight to have the discussion that as long as it's uh, over at the Legion, that it's acceptable to me. I, I would want some other input if we're talking about behind the senior center. Right. Yeah, I agree with Jerry, as long as it's that upper lot. If the board wants to, to make the vote so it's contingent upon that particular lot, then that would be fine. I'd like to make it a motion contingent upon the use of the lot over at the American Legion. Second. Any more discussion? It is kind of, yeah. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to Okay. 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 So we got a couple more things to talk about. Um, I want to get talk about a couple of the articles in the special town meeting more. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can we address new business number two? Engineering services. Oh, I dripped all through my bed that one, didn't I? Sorry about that. So yes, we have a request from the building committee to allocate roughly $1,600 for engineering services from the contract <coughs> with our uh, standby consultant. It's 1650 and it's for controls for the safety complex. Any questions? Motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the There's building that. committee's uh, recommendation. We'd like, uh, I'm sure you guys want to get that done before winter comes around with the new uh, furnaces in there. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I want to jump back to the special town meeting um, review of the draft warrant. I only want to talk about a couple of articles. Um, and it's mostly to do with the direction we want to go. Um, during during our public meeting on Tuesday, which was actually the long-range planning meeting, the Municipal Building Committee was there, and they asked us a form of the select board to uh, talk a little bit more about the um, what we really want to try to do for land and the fire, the North Hadley Hall fire station with the fall town meeting. So. Here we are, our regular scheduled meeting, so we can talk a little bit about it. 
So an update on where we are with the North Henley Hall. We actually got the um, historic preservation restriction, a draft of it in today. Um, we have a draft of the RFP. So at our next meeting, we'll probably schedule to go over the restrictions and the RFP and put it all in order before we send it out. So we're actually looking at the fact that we probably won't be able to, even when we put an RFP out, review it, get all the comments back when we choose somebody, we wouldn't be able to take it to town meeting until, we wouldn't be able to take it until the fall town meeting, it has to go to the annual town meeting, unless we have another special town meeting, correct? So the, uh, the, the the vote that we would be looking for is uh, what to do with the money because I think we've got everything in place in terms of uh, authorization to sell the property. We have authorization to sell, but don't we still have to bring it, bring back the proposer? Bring back the proposer. Will the success, successful proposal? I'll check with council. That's a good question. Uh, so my impression was that uh, once we received the authorization to sell, that we could go go ahead and sell. Okay. Um, so we, let's still assume we do. Yeah. That would be the earliest timeline we have. Um, then we probably would be somewhere in uh, January, February time period, trying to because if we do a month, we put it all together. We do a month to solicit. A month or two to review in the January time, January to February time period for actually selling it and getting mm -hmm. and doing the transaction. So. So we could have funds coming in prior to annual town meeting. We could. Mm -hmm. But then, what do we want? To, so we're not going to get anything for. We're not going to have a new building. Even if we go out and buy land, we're not going to have a new building all set up for the fire department to move into. Exactly. You're putting the cart before the horse again. I just don't get it. So this is the cart we have. Well, so it's got a lot of flat tires, and you ain't got enough of horses to push it. So where are we with the RFIs for the land? So there, we have one person come back with a land request, so they're willing to sell to us, but we still have to have permission to go out and buy the land. So we have an article in town meeting for fall article town meeting 18. that we'd have to put money into, and we still would have to go through a procurement process. We know we have one person out there who's willing to sell us land. I haven't seen that information. Oh, that was in a packet a couple. Okay. Um, we also know we have land at North Hadley Hall. If we set up the sale of North Hadley Hall, so we keep a, the vacant field piece, we have that land too that a possible facility could be built on. So really, what, what we're being asked is by the building committee, and what we need to think about is where do we want to go next with this? Do we, are we okay with, for short term, either renting a facility, whether it be the facility we already have at North Hadley Hall when we sell it until we get something. Are we okay with putting everything into kind of consolidating a little bit at the regular station and putting other stuff out? Are we okay with renting a space somewhere else in North Hadley? So all three of those options don't require us to purchase land or to allocate money right now to this Warren article to buy land. If we're not okay with that, then we need to think about having them move forward with purchasing land. But we're still gonna come up short. We'll have land, and we'll have a building. So. I think we need a joint meeting with all the parties that have to do with this, including the building committee, the fire department, the finance committee, and us to sit down and kind of brainstorm and understand uh, on a sheet of paper what exactly is available to us and what we're talking about and then try to come up with some type of, of plan that we kind of either all get behind or not get behind to yeah. John's point let, let's try to get all the powers to be we're, in one room we're, we're over nine hundred thousand dollars in a hole in next year's budget where do you think you're going to get the money to rent for two or three years before you build something you don't are you going to fund it you got some extra money hanging around there, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> I'm going to fund it on my chair select salary. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's the whole issue. We, 
do we actually spend money to go buy land and not really know what we want to do and still have maybe a possible site that we can reuse? Um, that, that is the question. I mean, are we going to tie up more, more of our money? Um, so we can we can we can schedule a meeting with the we don't yeah. we don't meet the next two weeks, so we can try to set up a meeting on one of the next two Wednesdays with everybody. It's actually on that side, so you're not flying. <laughs> so it's the I can't read it. It's the thirtieth and the twenty. Twenty third. The twenty third. Uh, so we can try to set up a meeting and we only talk about this one issue and hash it out and, and lay out the plan and that gives us time to answer the question about do we have to go back to town meeting at all um, or, or do we make a decision now then if we make it I mean we already we made have, a decision to, to we don't have enough information to make a decision yeah. in my opinion but we've closed a warrant already and our articles on there but we haven't we, put a number yeah up. we haven't put a number in there and I mean I I mean just play this forward so let's say we made a decision and then we go forward to town meeting there's gonna be a line of people at two microphones yeah. asking questions that we couldn't possibly answer oh, so yeah. I think that's a foolish position to put ourselves in so I've been all in favor of having a meeting and uh, you know I, I have great faith in in the fire department and in the building committee to answer probably 90% of these questions it's all going to be up to our in, our board vote and our individual votes at town meeting of what, what we're going to want to do. Well, I think we when this was sold at town meeting, my personal opinion was we were going to sell North Hadley Hall and build another fire station and possibly have a big enough piece of property to put the uh, fields, the, either the fields or the uh, park, and rec. park and rec on. That was the understanding how it was sold at town meeting. And again, if you sell it to the people one way, don't come back and bring it to them and say, this is what we're doing now. Well, we're, well, not telling it. we're not saying, saying yeah. we're doing anything different. In my understanding, we were going to sell the property and get rid of the whole North Station, and we weren't going to put another North Station in. That's the way I viewed this. I thought that that was up in the air, and yeah. it was recommended that we build one, but there was no decision yeah. made. So again, I mean, I think if we go to have this meeting and we need to approach it from the spectrum of what are the range of options and then we need to collectively eliminate some of the options and have very good arguments as to why they're not a good idea so when people get up at town meeting and say how come you're not blah 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 we can say because and yes. then you know to John's point there may be one or two options that we're left with that are both viable and then we'll have to vote our conscience on that one so meeting, mm -hmm. which dates do we prefer? Whatever is available for the building committee. It's yeah. actually going to be a really good meeting. So will we have coverage, TV coverage, Richard? What's your preference, Chief? You say it, I'll be there. So the board is uh, invited to the uh, Mass DOT uh, meeting on the 29th at 6 p.m. And we're also doing union contract negotiations on the 30th and it's starting at 3 p.m. So the 30th um, we could roll right through? Yep. On the 22nd and 23rd you don't have anything scheduled. I, I can do either date, so I'll just defer to why don't we leave it open and make sure see where we can have where most, everybody can know, do what I'd like to propose a date to them. let's do the 30th at what time seven seven would it be helpful to um, maybe because the 30 the, the I, I'm fine with the 30th but it's also you know getting closer and closer to the October town meeting so would it be helpful for people to circulate kind of questions in advance of that so that the fire chief and the building committee and you know we can kind of be really thinking about it so everybody's just not walking into that meeting somewhat cold uh, you can circulate questions that'd be fine i think i don't think we're going to walk in very cold no i think we, everybody we all know everybody knows where they stand on this issue right now i think i mean the only thing to decide is i mean truly we just need to i mean we're going to go out for to get rid of this piece of property like we were told to 
and we're going to not get rid of it until at the earliest January or February. Mm -hmm. And then even if we buy property, we're not going to have a building up by January, February. But if the people vote to buy the property and build a station, then you, the votes already made to that, sell that, the building. Yes, but there was never a paying any rent on that building right now. Yep, there was never any vote to build the station. No, but I think town meeting is going to want to know what yeah. the plan is. Yeah. We need, we should have at least ninety percent thought out before well, town meeting. We, we actually should have had it before we actually asked them to sell it, but we didn't. We but just, we didn't, so we, we just got the vote to sell it. Time to time to make it right. Time to catch up. Mm -hmm. As as John says, turn the cart around, maybe. Right the ship. All the wooden wheels are rotted off of it right now, so let's see the cap. We got to start somewhere. Historic too. I mean, I I need to see that before and yeah, make sure it's reasonable that we have a piece of property that we can sell anyways. I haven't seen that piece of paper. The yet restrictions. Either. Yeah, yeah we just today. got those. That's yeah. what I mean. I mean, I I don't think the fire department or the building committee has seen those either. So I mean, and and to your other point that the property was part of baseball field anyway after it was surveyed, or was it two lots? Uh, it's one big lot. It's one big lot. So you couldn't build anything on a baseball field anyway. Then well, you have now you got another article. You're gonna we could it. actually subdivide the lots before we sell. Any more questions you want to ask? You can ask. I mean, there's lots <laughs> of questions. Well, but that's my point, Guilford. I yeah. think if everybody's not even thinking page, that sure. we can subdivide the lot, all of that information should get to everybody in advance of that meeting to say these are all of the things we need to be talking about. Because yeah. otherwise so, people are just reacting or saying, that's not true, and then we're bumping another meeting. Well, we're doing that anyhow, I imagine. So, yes, yeah, so if you have a question, let's just go ahead and send them in. And we'll get them all. Have them go, I'll go to the, Mr. Nixon. And if anybody who's listening has a question, send it in to the town administrator. Okay. So the site has been reviewed correct, by a surveyor. Is yes. that available to look at as well? Uh, yes, it has been. Thing. So uh, Tim has that information. The site meaning the proposed one? No, the no. existing. The existing. The existing. existing. It's actually bigger than we thought. Mm -hmm. Was that ever appraised value on that building yet or not? No, but uh, the um, the assessed value, if I remember correctly, was four hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. So if we didn't get anywhere near that, we could reject the bids. Or the you you can, or if you accept a bid below that, you have to publish the reasons why you accepted that bid. Because if somebody offers you fifty thousand dollars for it, I mean, it's cheaper for the town to keep it and knock it down and build a new station right there. I would think than <coughs> trying to buy land. Well, I don't think uh, knocking it down is going to be that's as easy as you think. I know, but you know, I mean, you if you have space. somebody, and that's the other thing about do, reviewing the RFP when you review that at the next meeting is that you know we need to decide, you know, if somebody gives us fifty thousand dollars and is going to use it for the things we want or things people want to be used for we're still not paying for the upkeep. upkeep of it and if that person's willing to let the fire station stay in there until they get all their permits and start the reuse plan that's all gravy and that that's an acceptable we need to set if that's an acceptable proposal um, someone may offer us only ten dollars and say i'm going to do everything you want me to do keep the historic person keep the historic facade, keep everything you want, and I'll let them stay there for a couple of years until you work out what you're doing. I mean, those are, yeah. we don't know what anyone's gonna say. We may have some person come and say, I don't want the building, all I want is the field for a parking lot. Um, so that's the other part of this thing we have to work out is in that proposal, what is the most advantageous use and what do we consider the most advantageous? Yeah, we can also write, write these issues into the RFP as well if you wanted to say uh, occupancy in a two-year time frame or something mm -hmm. like yes. that. Yes. That's a possibility. Or the most advantageous is the fire station can stay for two years while you do other work on the other side. Right. And there's, those are the things that, that's the other part we have to select for. We have to base our decision on the RFP based on what people have told us and what has been told to the building committee. All right, so the 30th, we'll ask if they want to join us. And uh, we're meeting with the Municipal Building Committee and Finance as well. Let's invite Finance. We can invite everybody who wants to go. All right. It'll be an open meeting, yes. obviously. Here or Senior Center downstairs? Wherever.
however you want to hold it. Oh, Wednesday's um, uh, the Alcoholics Anonymous uh, group uses the downstairs oh, senior okay. center, so, so we're here. Start here. Okay. Okay. And what time would it start? Seven. So, okay. Okay. So, does anybody else want to talk about any other items on the special town meeting now, or we want to go on to the? Uh, fire chief and town administrators evaluate next evaluations. Very well set. Okay, just uh, just an update. Um, so um, it's been uh, advertised in the newspaper up in Franklin County already that uh, uh, that uh, we're going to be looking for an accountant. Uh, so we uh, we're going to need to change that uh, accountant uh, salaries. Uh, there was a question on the water debt and interest, and I went back and took a look at that and realized that I'd mislabeled that. That's water salaries, not debt and interest, so we're all set there. Okay. And do we have a viewing date for the road you're going to try to accept? We were talking about the 29th. 4.30. Since we're meeting at the uh, uh, meeting for Mass DOT, we thought we would do 4.30. And we were going to like, get with you and find out if that uh, date and time worked. For what? For the, uh, for the layout of Laurel Drive, which would be the next legal step towards getting this uh, accepted as a town way. I know Randy cannot make that day. I asked him today. Okay. If you need Randy, Randy I think. All right. So we'll, re we'll regroup and work with you all to come up with a date and time. Okay. And then um, we also don't need the polls for the yeah, thing that right. to be a quorum, I understand. Oh, it doesn't even have to be a quorum? It just has to be, I might want to check that. I, I don't think, think you need to take a vote, so it has to be a quorum. You don't, I mean, you don't vote there, it's just a physical inspection. I okay. thought the vote was held back in the meeting. Uh, I, um, I, we could had, be wrong on that too, but. We had a conversation with members of the Municipal Building Committee about their 10 articles. So they're going to take that information back and work with the committee on that. Uh, I talked to planning board on the last two articles. Uh, they are going to have those articles available on the 10th, on the 7th of uh, October. So on uh, your last meeting to work on the warrant, that these two uh, zoning articles will appear. And Community Preservation Act, I don't think they're, they've met, so I don't know if they're going to be able to carry those articles forward. Okay. All right. So do we want to do goals and objectives for the fire, fire chief? Yep. So we... We got these two weeks ago, no, last week. A couple, couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, yeah. Is there any comments, any questions? I have comments. I, I just want to make sure that, that you're bringing Mr. McKenna up as fast as you can to help you out with the times that you have available to you. I know it's, you know, I think, as we heard earlier tonight, Mike, you're, you're a hardworking guy. And uh, the quicker he gets up and running and able to take over some of the responsibilities that you shoulder exclusively now, the better off you're going to be to the town, to your family, and to us in general. And, and the second thing is, is that I think one of the, the major um, obstacles to any small town is getting volunteers to work. Is there anything, how do we get more volunteers on the fire department? Is there any training classes available? Is there any incentives available? Uh, how do we do that? Is it, can you get into the schools to start, you know, the kids earlier? Is the kids not what you want? How do we get more people to help you in that aspect as well? We have been actively recruiting. So we have, um, we actually have two applications in right now that we'll be, we'll be reviewing putting in front of a committee to make sure. The problem is, is that usually it's short time, short term. So the investment in the person to get the qualifications to do it, uh, you have to weigh that against how long they're going to be around. So, putting them putting them through the bare minimum Hampshire Six program, which doesn't even it, it provides complete basic. So it's basically getting on the truck and being an extra step hand. Um, 
it, it gets pricey. You're talking between eight and ten thousand dollars to get somebody through the whole program. Uh, so it's tough. So you got to find folks that are willing to make a commitment to that, and uh, that's the hardest part. As far as uh, Guilford and I were actually talking this morning about if we can maybe, it's, it's some numbers that I have to work on and that certainly can be a part of that goal with the, the ambulance portion as well, but seeing if there's any incentives, like you said, that we can provide to call force members that might make it worth their while to take away from family time or whatever. You know, they're all, everybody is extremely busy, you know that. Yep. Um, so it's, it's difficult. So it's time frame not only for them, but for the folks that we have to do the inspections at. So it, it, it's, it makes it difficult, plus the certifications now. The certifications are, are pretty insane to be able to do the inspections. The town of Sunderland actually pays people to be on call, don't they, every day and every night? So there's a, even if you don't get called out, there's an X amount of dollars which is dedicated to that person. And for that, they stay in the town around uh, and available should the alarm go off. So if the alarm goes off, there's two people, I think, uh, that are on call that are expected to respond because they're being paid to be expected to be responded. Is that anything that would be an advantageous to you? That's one thing we've been talking about going back to groups and uh, basically putting forward some sort of, again, some sort of a stipend. But again, that increases the, the budget. Um, and finding the people that can actually make that commitment. So we were initially talking about and there was a bit of pushback on it, was uh, establishing groups from a specific time frame. We first talked about 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. because that's usually when folks get home and then when folks need to get off to work in the morning where they, we would have, we had initially started talking about three groups and then those groups would be broken down into, they could break it down however they wanted so that each night there would be a minimum of four available. Uh, An FBA standard calls for a truck of four people in order to do a fire attack. So as far as going out to car accidents and all that other stuff, certainly that could be one or two people. Um, minimum of two, basically. But so you yes, really don't have a problem getting like people to respond after five, do you? Yes. You do. Now it's, it's very difficult. It's, it, the problem is, is that, and we've been looking at this too, because we have, you know, there's some discussions about that of what if we really need to go to some of these calls and I understand that but there's a liability to me and to the town if we're not responding to it so does it suck that we have to go to all these car accidents yes however there's been there's been times when that car accident has turned into more than just a speedy dry call it's turned into somebody who's gone unresponsive who's actually trapped in the car that wasn't noticed to begin with so that's why we really changed that direction we were receiving letters from the Amherst Fire Department why we weren't on scene. Uh, this was when Jimmy was still the chief. So we changed that with during Jimmy's tenure, and um, we've we've been working with the dis with dispatch and with the contract negotiations going in. We're trying to clean that up in their SOPs and SODs to get more information so that we can determine if it's a call that we really need to roll the whole engine to, or if it's something that. Uh, Nick McKenna can run out to, or I can run out to, or one officer that's assigned to it. We've done that at Greenleaves. We've put together a program now where the the senior fam the senior housing they actually have a protocol that they follow if they burn their toes and set their fire alarm off. They go downstairs, they silence their alarm, and they call the fire department, and we ship one firefighter over there to set it, you know to reset it rather than toning off the old the whole department. So we are working on all. Is there a lot of popcorn and toast burning oh, over there? Geez. There is, but you know, there's also, there's also fires there, and that's the scary part is you always have in the back of your mind which one of these is going to be showing up and it's going to be something more than, it, it, you know, it is. And that's the hard part. It's the boy that cried wolf. And I've presented this at the state level where, you know, you have this type of situation where you keep going to these calls and which one is going to be this big, massive disaster. So that's all stuff that we have that we're looking at. And I think the dispatch part is going to be a critical component to it. So I think that, you know, when we get through that, I think it'll make a big difference. So uh, anybody else have any, as I said a couple weeks ago, Mike, not only Nick, like Jerry was saying, but you got other officers that have responsibilities for their positions. 
and the only way they're going to get the training in these inspections is to get them in there and get them started doing them. Absolutely, I, it's know, getting them to find the time to do that, John, and it's also getting them to get certified to do it because it is, you know, it's a substantial amount of time. It's not that I don't want them to do it; it's them being able to make that commitment. So that's, you know, that's certainly stuff we can talk with. But we're also building, bringing up new officers right now. You know, we don't have the old guard in there. We have young folks that are coming up and taking these officers. We're commenting on his specific goals, right? Yes. So. Um, the one on staffing levels and fire-based ambulance service. Mike, I'm just looking at, looks to me like your expected date of draft completion, January 31st. I, I, that just seems awfully early to me. I think that would be <coughs> wonderful, but... That's a, a draft of, so it's a draft, and that's in discussions with Joyce. She wants to get started, and she said she wants to hammer down on this, so um, sure. we can certainly review that, maybe when we get started to see. Uh, but we, I, like I said, I, it's not something that I haven't been working on, mm -hmm. um, so there is a lot in the pipeline already. So it's getting together and formulating it, <laughs> I guess, but yeah, it might be an aggressive thing, but I know that it's critical for this coming year because we have, uh, you know, we have a contract with Amherst that we have to give a one-year notice to. So, we, we I, maybe I should have written it differently with the RFP portion. I mean, we've done extensive work on just yeah, the sure. RFP. So that draft component that maybe gives us more information on if we're, you know, what our best course of action is going forward, whether it be, you know, re-upping re with Amherst again, or if it's putting on our RFP and see if we can get it better. A better mm -hmm. price for the community. Okay, I'm just, you know, don't want to see you set up all of a sudden. December. I'd be happy to make it June. You can change that to UNE if you want. I was thinking it. February. Yeah. February. Yeah. <laughs> first. February first. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So I have one thing, and that's with your up monthly updates. You're going to have what you complete in the inspections. The monthly reports. Yes. Mm -hmm what we complete you're going to have the inspections you complete in there is there any way of knowing what you didn't complete everything on the calendar is completed or for, or it's moved forward so that calendar that you go on and if you need it printed out we can do that that's what we have completed it doesn't include basically we tried writing down everything that was done during the day but it's so time consuming so when we put in office work i don't go through that i'm right out a grant or working on bills or correct you know but, I mean? but in the inspections yes I mean you have a schedule for your inspections right mm -hmm. correct so maybe it's not in this report is there and maybe it's not as part of this not part of your goals and objectives but is there a way to see what you scheduled for the month for inspections and what was done and what was not done yeah yes so that Google Calendar that you have is the actual what's actually being done so if it's not completed on that day it's actually pushed forward to another day so if we schedule for example we try to schedule some gas stations let's say we schedule it for a Monday and Monday comes and we have three fire calls and four people call to have us do a home inspection that's critical um, that gets pushed up so it gets moved up the calendar so when it's complete it stays on the calendar where it's at okay so we have to okay and we've been trying to put descriptions with it too so in the description it actually gives you information on what was accomplished or what was what's expected to be okay done. all right any other comments uh i i just have one i was uh i was sitting talking to somebody the other day who works for warner brothers and said you know that some of the old guys were sitting around saying that for 35 years they drove trucks and now when they look at the the um uh, testing that you have to do whether it's the written test and the driving test they said I, I can't believe that I was able to drive a truck for 35 years and didn't have a, an, an accident he said there's no way on God's green earth that I could go through all this stuff with the testing and everything we're over regulating everything to so much uh, and, and we see it in the fires we see it in police we see it in, in the people that we're talking to us today that we're just over regulating thing and it's becoming such a burden to small communities that it's ridiculous and, and that's just my tirade I, I, I almost I, um, I was laughing like crazy when the guy was saying, I drove a truck for 35 years, never had an accident, but apparently I'm not qualified to do it. 
All right, so is there a motion to accept the Chief's goals and objectives for next year? So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Good luck. Thanks, Mike. Chief. Thank you. Did you get a, either one of you guys get any verbiage from East Street for a placard? No, not yet. No, I, I have been in contact with her. She says she's working. Okay. okay, so now we have the town administrator's goals and objectives. No one submitted Well, you submitted and was it that? No, you, I didn't. You, didn't you submit some? On these? Yeah. No, I, I just realizing I didn't. Oh. I meant, well, what I was um, intending to submit was just um, dates, like, like Mike has is laid out, so they're actual um, target deliverable dates on these and then also um, like we did last time being more specific about what the deliverable actually is because I think some of these I think the goals are good but I think the way that they're worded currently could lead to misinterpretation on either either part either party's part so we should do the same thing we did last time okay. which is what I meant to do <laughs> do you, you want to why don't I revise things and present them again to the board? All right, or do the two of you want to just talk it over between the next two weeks and have it for the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah, we're actually getting together next week, right? That's right. Okay, so maybe we could okay. do it then. All right. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, sorry. I'm okay. It's been busy. No. I feel like all I do is working right lately. All right, so I think we've covered everything. Is there any announcements? No announcements? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, the Goodwin Memorial Library Trustees and Planning and Design Committee needs your opinion. Um, the Architects Johnson Roberts Associates will present the options for the site of Hadley's Library of the Future on Monday, September 28th at 7 o'clock in Town Hall. So it's a chance for people to participate in the um, visioning and uh, of the future of Goodwin Memorial, encourage people to attend. And you got my email. They're going to be setting up meetings and everything else with different committees yep. and. and mm -hmm. Okay. Did Joyce extend the condolences to the Washkevitz family at the last meeting? I can't remember. She, she did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I know this is not Hadley, but tomorrow night you can walk down the middle of North Pleasant Street in Amherst, and it's actually kind of cool to do it. Uh, so anybody who uh, has a chance, the street will be closed for the block party oh, in block Amherst. Party. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. You can walk up and down the street, and nobody yells at you for walking up and down the street. So it's kind of fun. DPW have adequate signage for that? Uh, we just use big trucks. <laughs> it's a big truck parade. All right. I have one actually. Um, I don't know if we're meeting on Wednesday again. I could probably wait to announce it. But uh, Saturday, September 26th, so next Saturday, um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the uh, district attorney's office, as well as um, uh, several area police departments, are going to be sponsoring a drug take back day. We already have our permanent drop box within the lobby, but we'll actually be having, um, we're going to be working with uh, Hadley Triad um, to have a little site right out front of the uh, police department where we can uh, <coughs> accept, uh, police and fire department where we can accept um, any any uh, type of prescription drugs that, drugs that people want to drop off. Uh, we'll take those questions asked and uh, just make things a little bit easier for people to get rid of that stuff. Right. I have one. Um, this coming Friday from September 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Hadley Elementary School, we're teaming up with a group of parents that started a Sammy Pollard Memorial Scholarship Fund, and it's going to be under the wing of the Hadley Fireman's Association uh, for scholarships for high school, graduating high school students and also families in need. Uh, we're going to be conducting a friends and family CPR class for sixth and seventh graders and if folks want to come over and just check things out make a donation or actually participate it's going to be at the Hadley Elementary School um, in the cafetorium. Great. Anything else? All right. 
Mr. Devine? I'd like to make a motion that we go into executive session um, to discuss <coughs> a strategy with respect to conduct uh, con uh, collective bargaining, and we would not reconvene. Is there a second? Second. Just point of information, I think we have to mention which uh, bargaining okay. units we're working with. So the unions are DPW, police, and dispatch. So as the chair of the Halley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into an executive session, and that I state that this discussion in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley, and we will not reconvene an open session after this. Roll we'll call vote, uh, Devine? Yes. Uh, Maury? Yes. And Keegan? Yes. DPW. Con conflict of interest. You're not going to take them separate. Are we, we all going to be combined? We can take them separate. You can take them separate. Uh, yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. <laughs>